Have you ever heard the phrases start small, dream big? That's exactly what the Minimum Viable Product, or MVP, is all about. It's the first step in bringing a product idea to life while minimizing risk. But how do you define what's minimum and what's viable? Today, we'll dive into how product managers create an MVP and why it's such a powerful tool. Welcome to episode number six of Product Management Explained. In this episode, we'll explore the minimum viable product, or MVP, what it is, how to define it, and why it's essential in product development. By the end of this video, you'll know how to identify the core features of an MVP and use it to gather valuable feedback from real users. An MVP is the simplest version of a product that provides value to users while allowing the team to test assumptions and gather feedback. It's not about building a half-baked product. It's about focusing on what's absolutely necessary to solve a user problem. For example, think about Instagram. Its MVP was a simple app for sharing photos with basic filters. Over time, it evolved into the feature-rich platform we know today. But the MVP focused on just one core value, photo sharing. The MVP approach reduces risk, saves resources, and helps teams validate their ideas quickly. By launching an MVP, you can test your core hypothesis. Do users find value in your product? Without spending months or years on development. Our example. Imagine a team working on a fitness app. Instead of launching with every possible feature, workouts, meal plans, tracking, they start with one core feature, tracking daily steps. This lets them validate demand before adding more complexity. Defining an MVP involves three key steps. First, identify the problem you're solving. What's the user pain point? Second, determine your core value proposition. How will your product address this pain? Finally, prioritize features based on what's essential for delivering this value. Example. Let's say you're building a budgeting app. The problem? People find it hard to track spending. The value proposition? A simple, user-friendly tracker. For the MVP, you'd focus on core features like expense categorization and simple reports, leaving advanced features like financial forecasting for later. Once you've defined your MVP, it's time to build it. The focus should be on speed and efficiency, but quality still matters. Use frameworks like Agile to break the MVP into small, deliverable tasks and work iteratively. Example. For instance, a team building a food delivery MVP might start with a bare-bones app that allows users to browse a limited menu and place orders. Advanced features like user profiles and delivery tracking can come later. After building the MVP, the next step is testing. Share it with a small group of target users, collect their feedback, and use that feedback to iterate. Remember, the goal is to learn, not to create a perfect product on the first try. Example. A startup testing a language learning MVP might discover through user feedback that short, interactive lessons are preferred over lengthy ones. This insight can guide future development. Avoid common pitfalls when building an MVP. Don't try to cram too many features into the first version. It defeats the purpose of being minimum. And don't ignore user feedback. It's your roadmap to improvement. To wrap up, creating an MVP is about starting small, solving real problems, and learning from users. It's a powerful strategy for building products that truly resonate with your audience. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more product management insights. In the next episode, we'll explore how to measure success with key metrics and KPEs. See you then.